Uh, my name is Brandon Gomez. I'm 18 years old and I currently live in San Rafael, California. Uh, I was raised here, and but I was born in Los Angeles, California. And we moved here when I was still small. Hello, my name is Kathy Duarte. I'm 18 years old. Um, I'll be a freshman at UC Santa Cruz and I hope to study computer science and become a software engineer. Uh, so my name is uh, Santiago Gomez. I am 18 years old. I was born in Lagos de Moreno, Mexico. Uh, and I moved here when I was three and a half. Hello, my name is Meredith Reyes. I am a, a Latina um, woman. I go to Santa Rosa Junior College and I am planning to transfer to UC Davis um, to complete my animal, san animal science major to become a veterinary surgeon. For my parents, me and them have discussed this a lot. For them, it was more so to give me a better future. Uh, in Mexico, well, my dad came here previously uh, without my mom and me when I was around a year old. And he came here with his sister and then, no, with his two sisters because both my aunts were here. And so he kind of ended up deciding that this was a really good place for us because it would give me better opportunities, a better future. And it wasn't, uh, we weren't going to struggle as much as we were struggling in Mexico. For me personally, I was too young to understand what, we, what was happening. Uh, like I said, I was three and a half when I moved here. I've been here for almost 15 years. And so kind of that move for me, uh, I was kind of, I wasn't really affected by it because I didn't understand it. But later on, I respected my parents a lot for the decisions that they made because Thanks to them, kind of where I am now, I never would have imagined myself kind of being in the position I am now. Uh, my parents always believed that like America had like an American dream for everybody, so they wanted to migrate here so they could provide a better future for uh, me. Um, in Guatemala, that's where like I'm from, they didn't really have like any doctors or anything, and my mom suffered a lot. She was always sick, so my dad didn't really have a choice. He had to migrate here in order to get money to provide for her over there. But like she started getting really sick and there wasn't any doctors to take care of her over there. So my dad thought it was a good idea to bring her here and I stayed behind with my grandmother. And then 10 years later, they decided to bring me over because over there typically kids only study up until like third grade and after that they have to drop out and help with everybody else. And then the next child gets to go to school up to third grade and it's just a cycle. But they didn't want me to do that so they told me to migrate with them. And when I, came, when I came here, like, I started in fourth grade because my age and stuff like that in America, like, you have to go to school based on your birthday, I guess. Yeah, so I had to start in fourth grade. Yeah, that's why they brought me over because they didn't want me to stop my education. My parents decided to come here uh, to have a better life, pretty much. They moved here so they wouldn't have, so when they had kids, they, we wouldn't have to suffer as much as they did back in their home country, so uh, my mom came here and then she got pregnant and then she was living in, a, in Los Angeles and then that's where I was born. And then a couple, a bit of time after that we moved over here. My parents' decisions um, to come here to the country was because um, both of my, well mostly my dad was came here before my mom and my dad um, had family here, so he stayed with them. But he was an immigrant first. Um, and so I think, I'm not sure what he was doing here, but um, um, he noticed that he would actually live a better life over here um, in the US. And so um, he went back to the Guatemala, because that's where my parents are from. Um, they went to Guatemala, and my dad married my mom at a very young age, at like 8, 17, 18. And um, she, they both got married and my dad decided to take her to the US um, so that um, they would have our, their family here. What was it like when you first arrived? Uh, when I first arrived, I was very confused. Yeah, it was like a totally different culture and everything because like you guys, America had to stop lights and stores nearby and everything, and the refrigerators opened up in a different side. So I was confused about that for a long time. 
yeah and I was mostly shocked about the rooms because in Guatemala like even if you're poor everybody has their own room and in here when I came here I had to like share a room with my parents one of my aunts my brother and me and that was like a lot of people for me in a room so my family went back to Guatemala when I was about 10 and I had um, with my two other sisters we went back um, they both actually decided to wanted to stay back to Guatemala because it seemed like it wasn't working for them um, staying there so um, they decided to send us back to Guatemala and um, my parents were um, saving up to buy a house in Guatemala so we bought a house over there and we stayed over there for like about a year um, yeah, we stayed there for a year with my siblings, and we went to school there for a year as well. But um, when I went to school over there in Guatemala, I went to a public school first, and I did not like it at all because um, people who were from there, from Guatemala, would always bully me because they, they'd say they don't want um, white people to be around there, and I, w I was like, I'm not white. <laughs> I'm just like you guys and um, people thought, like, they're like, you're just my gringa, like, you're a gringo or a gringa, like, leave, like, you shouldn't be here. And um, I was like, I was really surprised as to, like, what was happening, and I was so bullied, so I was like, I was like, I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> like, I just don't want to be at the, attending the school anymore because of the people. And so um, that's oh, when you. I was about 10. 10 years old, and um, that's when it, my parents decided to send us to a private school in Guatemala, and I, I literally, I noticed the difference going to a, a private school because everybody there had money, they all wanted to speak English, they all wanted to be like an American person, basically, and um, I was telling them that I was born there and I spoke English fluently and they were all, they all wanted to become my friends because of that and they're like, tell me more about your country, like tell me more, like speak English to me, like practice English with me and um, yeah, I felt more welcomed there than going to a public school, but. I had a fourth grade teacher, her name was Miss O. She was very helpful to me, like adapting to this country because she would make me flashcards and make me study them every day while kids had like reading times. Because the school system back then when I migrated here, they didn't have like a new arrival program like ESL or anything. So it was just me in a class full of people who already knew English. So she, just, she would just kind of give me like worksheets and like flashcards. And during lunch, she would make me stay over. Or during the breaks, she would like pick me up from my house, take me to school and like sit with me, like make me pra practice the flashcards and that kind of like help me catch up with my peers. Mm, I would say migration has changed me because it kind of, it's opened my eyes to, see, to realize that many people move to different parts of the world to kind of get better chances or opportunities in life. For me, I never really understood that up until I was maybe a teenager or so because I was so, I was so un, I wasn't worried about what was going to happen next, seeing as how I'm not documented, so I'm a dreamer, I have DACA, and so, but before then I was, you know, my parents were scared because I was like, they were asking, oh, how was I, how would I be able to go to college or how would I work, how would I be able to make a future in a place where people don't want my group like the immigrants pretty much or they didn't want them and so I uh, it's opened my eyes and it's kind of helped me realize that uh, I guess it's a much although it's a difficult process to move here and migrate here from all of all parts of the world uh, it's kind of worth it I, I guess you would say at the end because you're able to uh, I guess kind of realize that many people around the world aren't as lucky. And so people can't really understand the fact that people, that why people migrate is because, is to escape from a life full of violence or full of kind of oppression or poverty to kind of be able to come here and kind of live a better life, one that they didn't really realize. It's changed me a lot. Um, 
before, like, I was kind of, like, one of those kids that used to get in trouble a lot over every little thing. Like, I would get into fights, uh, drugs, a lot of problems pretty much at school. But um, after I saw how my mom was uh, struggling, I decided to get my act together. And then when I got it together, I got a lot of opportunities, like Tay Radio. Um, I finished high school and I'm still in college, so, yeah. So when I came back, um, it was more, it was difficult to come back to because I came back to, I was doing, um, I came back to do fifth grade. Um, when I came back, it was hard for me to transition from a different language to back to English because I mostly spoke Spanish in Guatemala and I was used to speaking it and <laughs> And my friends would tell me like, oh, you're speaking Spanish all of a sudden. You're always speaking Spanish. And I was like, oh, I what? I am? So I'm like, I like forget that I'm speaking Spanish sometimes. And I was like, oh, I have to switch to English to communicate with other people. Uh... There's times that I don't feel welcome because sometimes I walk into a store or a gas station and I just walk in like just, I'm waiting in line just to probably uh, say how much I want for gas and then a person's like trying to talk to me in Spanish even though I speak English perfect but they, I think they assume that I speak only Spanish because of my color of my skin or the way I dress or something like that. So I have to immediately correct them like, I speak English perfect, I can understand you. You don't have to make a, you don't have to embarrass yourself by trying to speak uh, Spanish to me because I can understand you perfect. And sometimes I, I let them speak to me in Spanish and then I just speak in English after someone else and then they get shocked when they hear it, so. <sighs> For me, I can't really say out of the top of my head if I'm being honest. I never really paid attention to the fact that I was an immigrant because I was young and I didn't really understand what was what was what an immigrant what the difference was between an immigrant and a like a citizen so I was I wasn't really afraid I never really felt unwelcomed because my parents always helped me realize that although we're not from here it doesn't necessarily mean that we don't really share the same kind of like values and I guess you could say morals for me, definitely, I, I guess, yeah, I never really took so much attention to that, and I still really don't, because I don't really kind of feel different than others. One time, I was at Toronto High School, my school, and the class president, like, he got mad it was an accident, and then he, like, recorded himself saying that, like, he was going to call ICE and everybody, like, at our school, and that was, like, pretty like unwelcoming to me because I was like I voted for that guy and he still chose that and it was around the same time as Trump so I was like people voted for that too yeah my friend uh, we were we've been best friends since as long as I can remember uh, we went to high school went to all schools together and one day I got a call from his sister uh, she was born here but he wasn't he got deported to Mexico and so he was there for quite a while and then after, after some time, uh, he came back. He's back now. He's uh, doing good. He's working a lot. But he told me it was rough being in uh, the those, those cells because, like, he felt unwanted here in this country. So yeah. At times that I felt welcome, um, my school does this event sometimes now that they're like trying to be more aware about immigration and everything. And they had an immigration day where they invited immigrants to speak about their stories and everything. And I felt pretty welcome because everybody was celebrating immigration and everybody was embracing the fact that once in their lifetime they were immigrants or their ancestors were immigrants. My biggest challenges would have to be, like I said before, it was uh, I was a troubled teen so that was kind of hard for me and then I, was, I started like becoming a troubled teen at age 10 and then got my act together like at 17, 16 around there. I'm about to turn 19, so it's about two, three years that I'm doing good. I graduated high school, something I thought I never would do, and then I'm still in college trying to uh, get a degree in psychology, so yeah. 
the thing that I'm most proud of is going to college. I'll be the first one in my family to go to college. I'm gonna go to UC Santa Cruz. And I got a full ride and that was like very special for my parents because I'm an immigrant, you know, I don't get federal help but still the school managed to like find some aid for me and yeah and it just I hope to be like an inspiration for my brother even though he's like a citizen he can like look up to me and be like oh she's an immigrant she did it why can't I do it I have more doors open for me I enjoy meeting new people and going to new places. So I'm part of the Presente alumni, which previously I was part of the Presente class about a year and a half ago, almost two years now, which seems like a really long time. Uh, and so kind of with that, I really like this class because not only did I meet other people who were like me, but I got to my professor, David Escobar. He taught me a lot about myself that I didn't know of and a lot about my family and my background. It's something that I found really inspiring and amazing because he kind of inspired me to want to pursue anthropology because I do want to study anthropology when I am in college and I do want to be I want to be a speaker I want to be a speaker when I grow up so I'm going to study humanity and communication as well and so he kind of taught me that there's more to people than just what you kind of see physically there's a lot of mental and emotional I guess you could say barriers that many people put in front of themselves because of what they feel, of what they, because of what they feel and what they see every day. And so to me, I kind of learn to be able to understand each and every person kind of for what they are and what they've been through. I'm trying to become a therapist because I've been to therapy myself and I've seen that it's mostly females or, and most of them speak English, but there's some some of them speak Spanish, but I haven't seen a male that speaks Spanish, so I want to, I don't want to be the first, but I want to be like a, a role model to see that, oh, if I can, if I can do it, then you guys can do it too. Um, I know it's wrong to say no, but I don't feel like a true American. I don't know, in my head, like, I know David has like tried to like, changed the image and it's kind of like changed a little bit but I still like if I'm not like patriotic enough or like if I don't participate enough in the democracy I won't feel like a true American and if I can't vote then yeah I'm not participating so I think it's not like about race or anything it's just if, to me it feels like if I can't vote or like participate in process, protests or anything I won't feel like a true American. Where, where the country is at right now I feel like I'm not because of the president um, he feels everybody, every immigrant as a, an animal. I'm a daughter of immigrants and it's just really sad that like the Trump administration is doing what he's doing to this country to like flush out all the Im immigrants from this country when in reality this entire country is made up of immigrants. I wish they knew that we aren't those gangbangers, those drug dealers, those thieves, murderers, or something that people call us. We're actually really good people. Uh, we have big hearts, and if you get to know us, you might like what you see. Okay. Cool. Yeah, welcome. <laughs>